Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. This is part two of the water base real fire versus urethane real fire tutorial. If you haven't already, be sure to check out part one so that you can see how I got up to this stage in the artwork. So I'm continuing with the flames and I'm using white. So this is Trident white mixed with reducer. And I'm just further detailing uh, the layer of flames that I did previously. So the water-based uh, fire is obviously the one on the left that I'm working on and the urethane one is the one on the right. And as you can see, I'm moving that freehand template around. The uh, template that I'm using is the Fire Tool template set. Uh, I designed this set that comes with four stencils, and uh, Airshot Stencils uh, manufactures it and ships it worldwide, and we ship it Australia wide. If you want any more info on that particular template as well as anything else used in this video, by all means uh, check out the description below. I'll have some links in there for you. So I'm not using the stencil for all the sides of, the, uh, of each flame lick. So I'm just sort of creating a sharp edge on one end and then um, blending out with a bit of freehand airbrushing as well. So you want to mix it up with both freehand and use of the template. The airbrush that I'm using at the moment is the Iwata CMC Plus Micron. This one runs a 0.23mm needle nozzle setup. And I'm probably running at about 30 psi for this one. So usually a Micron I'd run uh, for detailed artwork at about 18 to 20 psi with over thin paint. But when doing uh, this real fire technique, I tend to run the air pressure a little bit higher just so that it. Um, pumps out the paint a bit thicker, that way I get better coverage between coats. So working on the urethane side now, I've mixed up a bright yellow. So this is white house of colour mixed with a bit of yellow and obviously some uh, reducer. And that's giving me a nice base for the next uh, flame layer and then I'll lay a candy on top of that. The airbrush that I'm currently using is the Iwata HPCS Eclipse. This runs a 0.35mm needle nozzle setup.
I do hope that you're enjoying this video so far. If this is the first time watching one of our videos, welcome for all of our regular viewers, welcome back. And if you are liking it, feel free to hit that like button, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. And also, if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe and tap on that bell icon. That'll notify you every time I put out new content. So building on some of the embers that are coming off the bulk of the fire. Now again, as I mentioned in part one of this video, this is a real fire. I call it real fire. Um, you know, Mike Lavalley, the innovator of this, who sadly passed away recently, he named this true fire. And it's uh, basically a fire technique that's not intended to look photorealistic. It's uh, basically an automotive style flame that can be used on many different applications. So I hope uh, you are getting lots of value out of this video. Okay, so now that I've completed that layer, I'm just going to tack rag it again, removing some of that uh, overspray dust. I'm doing this before the candy. And now coming in with some Pagan Gold Candy by House of Colour. I'm going to spray over that layer that I just completed. If I get a bit of overspray on the orange sections, uh, the previous parts of the fire doesn't necessarily matter. It'll just blend in but I am still trying to uh, tint just that layer that I completed. I can always come back in uh, later on with some uh, tangerine candy and tone everything down if I want to. You can really see how that candy is starting to give that layer some punch. And again, coming back in with that tack rag, removing some of the overspray from the candy and just that dry spray. And then I'm going to hit it with some SG100 Intercoat Clear just to seal off this layer of candy. Now back onto the water base side, 
I'm going to use a transparent yellow. This is transparent base mixed with yellow and some reducer to your liking. And this is all the Trident water base paint. And I'm going to effectively do the same as what I just did with the Pagan Gold. So I'm spraying over that layer that I did earlier with the, uh, the white. Okay, so now I'm switching to a light yellow. So this is white mixed with yellow and reducer. And I'm gonna further sharpen up and detail the, uh, the layer of flame. Again, very similar to all the other steps. So just building upon layer upon layer. But just uh, keeping in mind and trying to keep that flow going. You know, I'm trying to have that bulk of fire and then it all tapering off from there.
and just building up some of these areas, making them a bit brighter. So just further away with the airbrush and just gradually building that up. Okay, so now with a light yellow, again this is white mixed with yellow, house of colour. I'm going to work back over that layer of candy that I finished with the pagan gold and add some uh, highlights to these flames. They're just tweaking a little bit more with some freehand airbrushing, a couple of little wisps in there. Okay, so now back on the water base side and transparent orange I'm using. So transparent base mixed with orange and reducer. And what I'm doing is I'm just uh, spraying that over certain areas to knock part of the flame into the background. So just sort of push it into the earlier layers. So just nice and careful. A bit of overspray back into the yellow also works really well. It kind of just makes all the layers tie in together.
And I'm going to do the same now on the urethane side using tangerine candy. I'm just going to further deepen some of those areas of the fire and again have some of that overspray blend over onto our yellow areas that I did earlier. So essentially it's just a nice easy way to merge all of the uh, layers in and just have that real smooth transition. So another quick tack rag and then uh, I'm going to use the SG100 again and I'm going to seal off my candy. Okay, so now it's time to unmask it and then it'll be ready to deliver back to the customer and he can arrange to have uh, his painters clear coat it and that'll really bring out all of the colours and the depth within the artwork. So I'm going to show you that cleared panel coming up right now. Alright, so here we have the cleared sample panel. Again, this is only a sample. You can see there's a few little marks here and there. Obviously on the completed hot rod, that's not going to be the case. This is just to give the customer a better indication of what it will look like. He has asked to do another sample, so I'm going to showcase that on here as well. The next sample will be a bit more, uh, the colour of the fire will be a little bit more orangey and red. And I'm going to also incorporate some skulls into that one, so be sure to check that out when it's uh, released. But I do hope that you enjoyed watching both parts of this tutorial series and that you learnt a little bit more about how to create this real fire technique. And check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. We have lots of videos on this channel, plenty of tutorials that can help you create better artwork. So by all means, take a look at them. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.